In this series of videos, I'll be reviewing electric vehicle chargers. This is the Pulsar Plus from a company called Warbox. This review of chargers is going to go in everything from what's in the box to how the apps work to how individual features work. Because I think it's really important that you, the user, see exactly how this unit works. But I've also included stuff in there for installers because installers might want to know what's there and how to install them and how easy it is because it's important that you the installer and also you the end user are completely happy with the product that you'll be installing or using for the rest of your ev life now it's really important that you pick the right charger from day one because the last thing you want to do is be tearing one of these really expensive chargers out a couple of years later because it doesn't fit your needs anymore which is why i've also partnered with rightcharge.co.uk forward slash evnic to find you a local installer to install one of these units now before we unbox the unit let's get into some key features first of all it's available in two colors it's available in this lovely black and also a lovely white color it's a tethered unit only it's sold in type 1 and type 2 it's sold all over the world pretty much everywhere here in the uk this single phase unit here i have is pen fault detection which means it does not require an earthing rod here in the uk which is very very important they do also sell a free phase version of this unit if you're a commercial property and want a free phase unit they do sell a free phase unit it has fuse protection and is solar ready but for the solar option to work you need to buy the additional accessory which is the power boost option which is a little meter that goes basically after your electricity meter to monitor the whole house supply and also monitor any export that might happen to the grid. I'd like to apologize that this box has actually been opened by me once already and I'll explain why in a minute because it's not fully my fault. So in here we have a quick user guide and we did have a little card here like a little credit card for removing the face off this but even though I've lost it and I can't show it at the moment it doesn't really matter if you do lose it because the really clever part of this design which we'll show you in a minute is you can take this face off even if you've lost this card by just using any old card that fits so an old credit card an old hotel key they all work to take this faceplate off it's a really clever toolless design now this front face is the brains this is where we have the raspberry pi we have some of the switch conductors for, for the current selector and also some other settings that we can talk about in a minute which come with the power boost so we'll get to that in a second in here we have obviously a super clever Raspberry Pi computer. This Raspberry Pi computer is the brains behind the Warbox Pulsar Plus and it's very, very impressive. And if we remove this layer of cardboard, you can see one thing I'm really impressed with with the Pulsar Plus is the fact that they're nice enough to give you a full pack of screws and raw plugs for fixing not only the holster that comes with this unit, which is one of the best holsters I've ever seen, uh, but also for fixing the unit itself, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, we've also got in here the power boost. Now the power boost is an electric meter that needs to really be installed the time that you order a Warbox Pulsar Plus. It's got the two terminal connections for putting the power to and then we have the network connections here which you'll use a network cable to extend these and connect them into the Warbox Pulsar Plus so it can monitor what this is doing and what it allows you to do is in the Pulsar Plus app say that you want to charge from solar if this detects any export from that solar it will stop the solar export in theory and start charging from any excess solar so it doesn't stop you exporting but what it will do is try and use any of the excess solar to charge your electric car like some of the other products available on the market at the moment i haven't got a battery as well as solar so i can't test that on my rig so i can't test that will it also as well as stopping uh, you know as well as charging from solar will it actually drain an ev battery so i can't unfortunately test that to my to its full potential but i hope to do that maybe in the near time future with it but really impressive thing if you've got solar you want to do some dynamic load balancing and you want to do dynamic load balancing now but you're thinking of getting solar in the future this allows for just basically one form of electric device rather than several ct clamps but i would like to see them do a ct clamp version of this as well as this now we have obviously the installer's guide, which we can go through in a minute. We also have various pieces of paper, one specific to the UK and uh, one isn't. So as we get inside the next part of 
the unit this is where we get our electrical connections now what i really really do like about the pulsar plus um, they have all the drill holes pre-drilled so all the drill holes are pre-drilled for where everything's going and we also have a rear entry hole already pre-drilled -pre and we also have a rear entry which isn't pre-drilled so if you want to do rear entry you will have to actually drill the rear entry and then put the grommet which they have provided plenty of them but you've also got the rear entry which is pre-drilled pre which you will have to block up with one of the bungs that they have supplied but i do like the fact that everything is pre-drilled just makes it a lot easier for an engineer to know that everything's done and they don't have to try and the, you know work out if they're going to damage the ip rating by drilling in the wrong place so really good idea they've also got my favorite thing here which is i've gone on nearly every single of these reviews i've done one thing that i've really insisted that charge points have is Wago style terminal blocks. Now these are actually, I think, the actual brand Wago themselves based on the color, but they are a no maintenance block. I like them because they're idiot proof. And I'm sorry, electricians, if you're watching this, but some of you, your, your comrades, um, I don't trust to use torque screws because <laughs> I've, I've seen people use impact drivers, believe it or not, when tightening up screws in electric vehicle chargers. This stops that. So basically what happens is you lift these terminals up and then you insert said EV cable inside and then you clamp it down and that gives it a firm connection. They're no maintenance, they don't require, you can't over tighten them, you can't under tighten them and they're no maintenance which means the customer doesn't have to keep you know, making sure they've not come loose. So really good idea. It also results in less warranty claims for these charge point companies because hey, they don't start going sparky when the electricians have messed them up and uh, everyone blames the everyone blames the actual product rather than the actual sparky that fitted it. So really good idea. Now. On the board, there is, it says here, L1, L2, neutral, and PE. Now, let me just see if I can get that close to the camera so you can actually see it. So we've got L1, L2, L3, neutral, and PE, which is obviously normally what you'd call your earth. Now, on L3 and the PE, there is this blue joint cable. Now this blue joint cable is a loop that's only subject here in the UK which allows the device to have a pen fault detection system. So it's using this loop here and it's using part of the, the live free circuit and the way it's been done to do some pen fault detection which is very 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 clever. Now this is the reason why I've recorded the video twice because I assumed you could pull this cable out and the unit would actually become a free phase unit. It doesn't, which we'll get to in a minute, but the actual connections for this are printed on the bottom side of this Wago style block. And it actually says here, this is live one. This is the earth, which is, you know, at the moment live two. So we've got live one, which is your, your, main, your main live. Your earth is your second one. That's not used because it's part of the loop. That's your neutral. And then that's again not used because it's part of your loop. It also has built-in DC leakage protection. Now this is obviously reason why I say you can't turn this into a free phase unit, which is why I've recorded this video because I assumed you could, is because this is software locked. So I said to him, oh, well, if this is software locked, what if someone got a free phase in the, in the future in the house and they wanted to remove this loop and turn it into a free phase supply. You know, could you, is it future proof? And they said, well, yes, we could technically unlock it to make, you know, do free phase. Unfortunately, the cable we provide with this unit is only a single phase cable. So although, yes, they could unlock it. Yes, you could put free phase in. It wouldn't work because A, it's software locked. And also this is a single phase cable, which is a little bit of a shame. I'd like to be given the option rather than being forced. So it would have been nice if they offered this unit with pen fault detection, sort of a single and free phase cable that was in theory useless until it came, you know, until you may have got free phase in the future, which I get not everyone's going to ever get free phase, but I like to think things future far ahead and that it's possible that, you know, someone may be planning on getting free phase. But ignoring that for a minute, let's go over to these connector blocks over here. Uh, one set is for the power boost option. So one, one, one of these is connections for the power boost option so it can talk to the power boost. And the other set of these is so it can talk to a, another Warbox unit, be it the war, uh, Warbox Pulsar Plus or something else in the Warbox family. So if you've got 
two or three of these chargers, they can dynamically load, bounce, and talk between each other. Now, I believe at the moment there's a subscription on that. Uh, I don't know if that's ever going to go away. I've heard hints and rumors that it, that subscription may eventually disappear. And then here we have the ribbon cable that connects to the faceplate. And what's nice about this ribbon cable is it can actually be removed from the rear board as well as the front board, which means if you damaged it or an engineer damaged it, they don't have to buy a whole new rear unit. They can just snap out this, this ribbon cable and put a new ribbon cable in. And it looks like a pretty much off the shelf product. So no complicated ribbon cable there either. In whole, really nice unit inside. The last thing, not, not least, as I mentioned, the toolless design, it clips into this. And a few engineers have pointed out that that may, may impact IP ratings. I don't think it would personally, but I've had a couple of engineers come to me that they think that the, some of the screw terminal units where they have torque screws at the front would be better, you know, more waterproof units than this. The only screw on this is this little bottom screw, which is a little tiny torque screw, just to ensure that face doesn't just, uh, you know, try, a vandal tries to pull it off. But I actually think that I prefer not having a million screws at the front that could be incorrectly torque tightened and just a push on the clever design like this. Now, as an installer installing this, you will find something that I also found, which was even though it's a tiny, tiny unit like some of the other products on the market by other companies that are small, unlike their units, there is no issue with leaving any slack wire in here. It is not cramped. For somehow, they've made a tiny, tiny unit, but managed to leave plenty of room for pulling through cables, for bottom feeding it, for back feeding it. You can feed it whichever way you want. And there's still plenty of slack you can leave in there for wires, for pulling through either the Cat 6, if you're installing the power boost option, or just pulling through a nice chunky cable, um, SWA or whatever you're pulling through during the install. So I do like the fact that they have done that and there is just ample room in here, even with all the electronics, which is also quite nice to see that when you do put this face on this clip face, it's very easy to just plug this front face in. It's just a very clip thing. And then you push it down, clip it in. And there is one screw at the bottom. Now it's a torque screw, but I used a small Phillips head screwdriver and it tightened it up. No, no. And just dead easy. It just fits in perfectly, which is nice. Now, the, the main thing that I really like about the fact it's just clipped and just has this one screw is some of the other charges I've demonstrated have special tools to open them up. And if the customer lose the tools or you as an engineer forgot to bring some tools to the special tools to open it, uh, you, you won't be able to get in it. You, you basically, you can't get in the charger. It's really poorly designed in that manner for me. This one, all you need is this card here and you run it around the side and open it up. But if the customer lost this card, which let's be honest, it could happen, you could just use any old plastic rigid card. Um, you know, basically just run it around the edge and it would unclip this face, which is just, I think, a really nice design. It's also not got loads of screws it could possibly round when you're undoing it and doing it. If you were testing it, for example, it's just really, really well thought out. Now, one of the other things that you do have to remember as an engineer before you clip all this up is you need to set the Ampage correct inside using the dip selector switch. So if the DNO have specified it can only be a 20 amp charger, set it to 20 amps. And also there's two other dip switches in there. One is for dynamic load balancing between multiple chargers sharing one load. And you need to set which one the main charger is and which ones are the sub chargers to it. So there, that's a dip switch. Now at the moment that is a subscription off wall box, very annoyingly, but they are going to make dynamic load balancing between multiple chargers non-subscription because let's be honest people are going to want more than one charger now multiple evs multiple households so there will be an option for them for freely to talk between two charges and dynamic load balance the other dip switch is for the power boost option and if you've installed the power boost option it's in the manual on how to select that dip switch and they're basically the only two dip switches in there that you need to pay attention to this is the power boost option what i'm talking about before now this does a couple of things first of all it does fuse protection and that is the only thing it currently can do so basically in here we have the main terminal wires coming in which is fed straight through so after your electricity meter we plug in the two live and neutral wires here and then out the bottom here we have again 
the live and neutral coming out and then that would then go to your house and also your ev charger so this is before any split in the tails this basically just goes straight after your main electricity meter so depending on how much room you've got in your cupboard uh, this could possibly not fit um, in your current install or you may have to move it somewhere else to make it fit but it has to keep an eye on the entire house supply so bear that in mind um, it's not a CT clamp like some of the other companies use although it behaves exactly in the same manner uh, what it does a couple of additional features it will have a meter reading here basically displaying how much electricity you've used just exactly the same as your main meter but down here what we have is some communication pins so in here we've got the communication pins and this is how it talks to the wallbox pulsar plus unit so by cat6 cable we run the cat6 to here and cat6 to here and we've now got full communication between this and this and this will basically keep an eye on the house supply and whatever your engineer set as the power boost limit for the fuse balance protection this is what this will allow now I did mention if you got this option, you could also go solar. Now currently, Wallbox haven't turned this on, but it should should be being turned on any time when this video has come out, which is really really quite clever actually, because they always knew they were going to go solar, but hadn't developed all the software behind. The hardware was ready, but the software wasn't. So what this meter can do, which is quite clever is the fact that you don't need multiple ct clamps or have an engineer back out to fit another clamp somewhere else because this is keeping an eye on the entire house supply what it can do is it uh, it sees all the electricity going out and if you start generating solar and it starts seeing some uh, electricity coming back and exporting you'll have an option in the app to say charge from solar so if it sees an export of say 10 amps it will then increase its charge by 10 amps but then if the solar drops and the sun starts to drop and then we're not producing any export, then this will turn off because this is detected um, basically starting to pull from the grid. And that's basically all it does. It's just seeing what's pulling and what's going. Now, other charging companies decided to fit CT clamps to one to your solar and one to your house supply. And that's how they do solar management. This is just one meter basically put in the main supply. So it's a clever way of doing it. I do question why they couldn't just make a CT clamp version of this that goes on the main outhouse supply, which would also be bi-directional, seeing when power is leaving the house and coming back in. That means that you wouldn't need such a large, bulky meter inside your cupboard. They're obviously pulling extra data from here because this is a really quite intelligent meter, so they'll be able to get all sorts of other details from it like the voltage, etc. Um, by all these communication pins. So they're obviously doing extra stuff with it. Um, but none of it's in the app currently, so I do wonder why they don't just do a much smaller CT clamp version, which would probably be a little bit cheaper than what this costs, but then again, this isn't that expensive. If you've got to have fuse protection, you, you do have the option of going solar with this in the future. Now, this is a Wi-Fi connected unit, so it talks to your home network by Wi-Fi, and the way it works is basically you just download the Warbox app, which is Warbox dead easy to find on the app stores, download that, register your account, your name and address, etc. with the account details that you have and then stand near the device and it will use your Bluetooth to initialize the first connection. Once you're in there, you have all the other options of connecting your Wi-Fi, if, you, if your unit supports Ethernet, etc. You have all the other options to connect all that. So I connected mine to my Wi-Fi connection and this is now fully on the internet fully working as a Wi-Fi unit. Now, this unit and their app are one of the best designs I have ever seen. I absolutely love the color scheme. It's a really well designed app. It's really intuitive and really easy to work. It also prompted me when I first got this charger that it was due a software update. And I carried out the software update via the app and it tells you, the only problem it does on the app is it tells you to stand near the charger because it's trying to communicate with the Bluetooth unit. It, it sh if it's connected to Wi-Fi, it shouldn't tell you that because I was nowhere near the unit when I performed its, its firmware update. So if you're stood near the unit, you can do updates by Bluetooth. If you're not near the unit, then it will do the update by Wi-Fi, which is what I did here. Now, a lot of the units do allow for firmware updates. All the units I've spoken about and reviewed, they all do firmware updates. Now, there's a couple of things you can do in the app. You can actually lock the charger. So if you just press this button in the app, 
it will change color and the charger is now locked which is great if you don't want other people to use your charger but personally no one steals electric from EV chargers well not yet anyway so we leave I personally just leave it unlocked now another thing you can do in the charger which is quite clever is you can change the ampage by dragging around this circle changing how many amps you want to charge it now this could be useful for various reasons but one of the reasons I I might find useful is that say I did have solar and I was too cheap to buy the power boost option, which I think is about 100 quid, so it's not that expensive. But let's say I didn't buy it or I was waiting for it to be installed or, or I don't know, various other reasons. You could just set to how many amps you're producing in solar, say 10 amps, and this charger will be restricted to 10 amps. There is also a charge schedule option. So if we go into the charge schedule option, you can set Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday to, you know, which days you want, what times you want, end times and you basically can set a schedule. Now, the only thing you can't currently do is if you are an Optimus Agile customer where the prices change every 30 minutes, this does not currently do Optimus Agile. If you're an Octopus Go and you just want to set a you know, four hour, five hour cheap window of electricity, you can do that if you're just on a normal, you know, set dumb tariff. But if you're on one of these new dynamic tariffs like Octopus Agile, where the prices are changing every 30 minutes, it can't read the, the data off Agile's website API at the moment and change it. Now, it is capable of it because it has a Raspberry Pi computer in here. It's got a powerful microcomputer. Warbox are also partners with Octopus and Octopus Electric Vehicles for their vehicle to grid systems. So Warbox and Octopus are close friends. So I do suspect that this is in their roadmap for coming very very soon it just isn't a feature now so if you're an agile customer unfortunately it doesn't do it yet but i do imagine it will come soon now as i already mentioned this is one of the smallest units i've been demoing i mean it really is quite small it's it's about the size of my hand um if i'm holding it flat like that that way and if i spread my hand out it's about as big as my hand can spread out it's one of the smallest charges i've seen with plenty of tech packs into it and pen fault detection however unlike some of the other smaller units it's got a bit more style about it with it being rounded rather than a square um standard waterproof box unit that a lot of the other competitors are using it is a little lot nicer looking it's also got this lovely green glow light on the front which i quite like which changes color depending on certain moods modes and whatever you've set it to and this rgb strip in here could basically do any other colour and I've suggested ideas in a promotional video I did with Warbox up there if you want to read it on what they could do with this light and hoping that they will actually uh, do some of the things that I've suggested to this unit because I, I, it's a neat little unit, it's, it's very well designed. Now one thing that is apparent to me that because it's small and because it all works and the way it is, I do think that the engineer and the designer are probably the same person or work side by side when doing this unit because you very often you don't often see well designed well engineered units all in the same box and this is definitely both i mean even the holster it's how it sounds as it sounds i've got another holster for another unit out there that i you know use as my regular unit unit at the moment um and the holster has a button that you have to press to unengage the, you know the basic of the charging socket i'm going to be changing it for this holster because this holster you just do this off and you clip it up and on there's no button you can do it all with one hand so i do actually just think the whole design of this and that are just really smart parts of the unit in summary this unit is got to be one of my favorites it's one that i can certainly live with because not only is it small quite stylish looking unit the only problem i have with it and why i would not swap it out for what i've got now is it does not currently do agile which is a big one for me i'm i am an agile customer i like the availability charges that can adapt to agile constantly now i do believe that the warbox will be implementing this feature very very soon and when they do this will probably be my main unit that i will keep forever and ever because the rest of it is absolutely perfect i'm really impressed with everything inside like the wago terminals inside for engineers the basically the ability of space inside the fact that it's got a raspberry pi mac computer inside it and it's quite a nice charger to look at because it's got a small footprint and stylish light so as an overall charger it is one that i'd have 
it, as soon as they get agile. If I was a customer with solar, for example, or thinking get with solar, again, this is another unit why, why I'm quite happy with it. I like the engineering, the fact that you just have one power boost unit and that does solar and also fuse protection rather than multiple CT clamps all over the place. Now, the disadvantage of not having these multiple CT clamps is the competitors can show you exactly what you're exporting in solar and what you're importing from the grid. And from a stats point of view, that's really, really good. But if your only interest is in charging from solar, basically so you don't export it, this is what it does with the least amount of waste of extra CT clamps and extra wiring. Um, if you are looking to have one of these units installed, then please go down and check rightcharge.co.uk forward slash evnick, where they'll help you find a local installer to have one of these units installed. Thank you very much. Check out my overcharge reviews, and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.